Welcome back. For this vlog, I tag along with my colleague Jack, one of the vets, as he is on one of his biggest AI, that is artificial insemination, sessions of the year. At about 60 cows, it's not massive, but for us, it's pretty big. We're at Broom Park Farms, home of the Alm Angus, herd of Aberdeen Angus. We'll hear more about them, why they use AI, and how we manipulate the reproductive cycles of these cows to make it as successful and as low stress as possible a bit later. I'd just like to take a couple of seconds just to point out, yes, I have the occasional uh, vehicular mishap, but this is my truck, right? This is Jack's truck. And look what we find. He's modified it, he's adapted it, but i just like to make the point. It's not just me, it's all of us. For those of you that haven't seen AI in cattle before, Jack makes it look very simple. The semen is kept in plastic tubes with an individual dose. These are called straws. The straws are stored at a very cold temperature in a flask back at the practice using liquid nitrogen as the coolant. This smaller version is the travel flask. We're using six different sizes here. So Jack first carefully selects the right straw from its own compartment. The straw is then gently heated up in that water bath there. This is timed by Jack to try and keep it consistent. Once warm, the straw is dried off, then loaded carefully into the AI gun before having the end snipped off to release the semen. A sheath to protect the gun is then put over it, the gun set before Jack puts it down his top to keep it warm. Jack gloves up and lubes up. One hand is inserted rectally to locate and steady the cervix which sits just below the rectum in the pelvis. The vagina is wiped down before Jack passes the gun very carefully through that cervix, threading it over the gun. Once in position, the button is depressed, ejecting the semen right where it needs to go. And voila, that is AI and hopefully a calf made. At this stage, the cows also get a jab of a GNRH analog. GNRH is a reproductive hormone. I didn't want to shy away from showing you guys this procedure in detail, not least because it's a process that is very often sensationalized and vilified by certain groups who liken it and draw equivalences to far more unpleasant experiences in humans, suggesting that all of the complex emotional and social trauma and baggage associated with that is experienced by these cows. Hopefully you can see that this really isn't the case. I suspect it's more uncomfortable to be jumped by a bull. The welfare of these cows really is paramount to us and the farmer. I've got a very uh, reluctant George here. He's the farmer. These are his cows. Hello. Doesn't look awkward at all, does he? <laughs> but you're, George is running the show. We'll, we'll be more comfortable when he's talking about cows. So George, yeah. how many cows is Jack AIing today? Jack is AIing 53 out of a group of 61. Right, so plenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they all cows today? All mixed age cows, nothing, yeah. everything. had at least three calves. Yeah. Um, and so one bulling group. And the bull will go out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and see what happens. Using different sires. All right, so we've got your six ready. I'll just show you guys for the, for the benefit because you haven't seen this. This is Jack's system. So these are the, some of the sires, well, these are the sires being used. Um, all Angus. So, so a bit about the farm, George. So you've got about. Yeah, so there's about 300 uh, Angus cows to the bull yeah. this time. And we'll. We're well, airing, say, 53 uh, today. There'll be another group of heifers to AI yeah. and a few embryos to go in. Rest, it all just pulling groups. <laughs> Six weeks pulling and some multi sire stuff. So, yeah. like these will get a couple of sires. Yeah. We're going to DNA test them anyway because of AI. Yes. Um, 
and so that just takes the risk out of in case we get anything wrong or anything. Absolutely. Wrong. So we tried to work out earlier, is it something like a third, it, maybe slightly more of the calves that will be born next year will be born to AI or so? Yeah, so last year Jack did a similar number, or more, more cows actually, and over 60% of the calf. Yeah. Which was ideal, like, probably where we'd aim for it. Yeah. Yeah, the but other yeah. thing that suited us last year with Brilliant's um, this way is Jack's just got a program of handling them three times. Yeah. I'll... Instead of, um, I don't know if you talked about that. So no, not yet, but I'm gonna, I'm going to. I'm going to. So that's the key thing. So a it's, lot, yeah, yeah sorry, George. It's big for us because you've got like big, big group of cows and it's quite stressful on the calves because like, we have bull calves intact. Yep. And so they get quite, with all these cows coming on heat, they're getting stressed out and you bring them in and out. It's hot this time of year in June. Yeah. You bull them. And you just don't want to stress them out. Yeah. You're trying to get them in calf because it's absolutely against the whole thing. Yeah. And so, and so it suits us three times. And if we can get 60% plus in the cows, um, yeah, it's a pretty good, good result. And you should, I should say, just because plenty of people won't be aware, you're pedigree Angus producing, aren't you? Yeah. So Although all, you run them commercially in inverted commas. Yeah. Um, they're all just cows and we just record them all, basically. Yeah. And they're all registered on the Angus database. But yeah, we've been doing that for about 25 years. And um, just doing the AI to bring in size, we either probably couldn't afford to buy them ourselves outright yeah. or they're abroad and we can't use them. Yeah, we were just saying most of them are like Australian and American, aren't Yeah, they? mainly Australian now, really. And they're just recording thousands of cows in one yeah. group, so it's hard not to. All right, so it's a phenomenal way to, yeah, you say to disseminate those genetics and, yeah. and get hold of new things. And, and with that, the other thing from a veterinary point of view, is you're not having to, A, it's kinder on the animal, the shipping a, a bull all the way from Australia. And, and from a disease point of view, in the reality, they're probably not gonna want a British bull. But, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Move, anytime you move an animal, you're moving all the diseases that might be carrying with it. So the AI, nice and safe, nice and clean, and pretty effective. Yeah, so the two, from the breeding point of view, we can bring you new bloodlines. Yeah. And all the calves are born. So last year, we were getting maybe 20 plus calves in a day. Yeah. Um, early in calving, and so which for performance recording is awesome yeah. because they're all born on the same day, so you can really see their growth, and it's not like that one that's born six weeks at the end of the second cycle. Yeah. And you never know whether he's just being pushed off feed in the winter and pushed off feed in the summer. That's a really so uniform really good batch. Data from it, and all by lots of Aye. them. Like you can have two side groups and see how they're all performing. Yeah. So, yeah, so in terms of what you're trying to achieve with your Angus breeding, because really, it, I just think you know, animal livestock breeding as well as animal breeding in general is a bit of a dark art, I think. Yeah. So you've got all these different sides. Presumably, you've gone through your cows that like you've got in your sheet there, and you've um, so basically you've matched them somehow. Yeah. Um, say, for example, there's there's a few animals which are maybe quite high performance, and I mean that like their calf growth is good, all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah. Maybe their foot structure's not quite right. Yeah. So I've got a few bulls here which are really good on their feet, and so to do that to them, there's maybe a few which are. Um, lacking a bit of growth or lacking yep. a bit of milk, we'll just put in a side with a touch more of that. Yep. Um, a bit of frame size, so we're dropping our frame size, not so much cow weight, but dropping yeah. the frame size a bit. And so all the bulls are smaller frame size, but there's a lot, like a bigger cow I'm putting to a smaller, smaller yeah. frame so, size bull. So it sounds quite balanced. All of that it's, sounds it's quite balanced. So you're not balance it, yeah. pushing for extreme over extreme no. over extreme. Um, yeah, just trying to balance it out and get a more even herd. Yeah. Um, which is what AI, again, is really good for. Because obviously, chucking one bull in with 50 cows, they're all going to be to him, and that's fair yeah. enough. But if you've got a couple of them which you want to change slightly, that's yeah. where AI comes in handy again. Fantastic. Um, we're just sort of five or six cows. We're just taking down the terminal route, um, just selecting on the kind of two or three terminal traits and easy carving yeah. and fast growth. And that's just... We've got a few customers who just want that, and so we can just target that yeah. completely and it's quite simple. Versus the maternal side, so yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I'll show you. Um, I'll, I'll show you what the curve bending one. I know you said uh, you don't like it all, but I'll show you. No, no, I, yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Uh, no, that's fantastic. Right, we'll let Jack get on and let you get on as well. Is Jack's arm starting to get sore yet? <laughs>
Or yep. quite, well, quite a good view of the system with the drone as well, like the handling yeah, system. Yeah, it's quite good. different from the top, so, this one. Yes, this cow. Yeah. So this is, um, which I can show you on the stocks, but this is what we're going for. The, like the, what we call a curve bender. Yeah, okay. And so essentially, her size are best returnable and our best terminable. Um, and for those people who don't know what a curve bender is, it's, um, what's a curve bender? A curve bender is something that basically curves the growth of the grass. So it's low birth weight. If you yeah. imagine a, a graph of weight on one side and age on the other, yeah. at different axes, um, the weight is low birth weight and then exponential growth up to 400, 500 days. Yeah. But then their, their growth curves off and that means they put on flesh and stop growing bone. And yeah. So you'll see like a frame size, she's whatever she is, uh, yeah. maybe 56 inches but she's fat, like a finished steer. Yeah. And yeah, she's got phenomenal milk on her. And so this, like for a steer, like now, if I'm trying to finish her, the suns or whatever. Yeah. That's just easy on grass and grain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tremendous. Yet, um, she's kept a small frame. She's like, it's interesting, yeah, just like, um, so this is a Garth Tamania. Yeah. So this is one of their daughters. And they're pretty much all like this. So you can pretty much send them as a finished steer every day of the year. Really? Like, fat the whole time. Oh, you can Got see there. Perfect feet. And there'll be the wind that hits cars. Um, Sounds so like I think a... you can do it both. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I was just playing devil's advocate. Um, it's so hard. And yeah. It's hard. Yeah. They've been breeding for 50 years, so. Yeah. Um, absolutely. That, and so they're eventually getting there now. Hey. Yeah, so this, this is one of the Tamani horses. Yeah. Comes with really like a feet in general. Um, yeah, Ardo's fantastic, isn't it? Ardo's really nice and dries up really nice. Again, like structure, all we're looking for them. It doesn't need to be perfect. You just need, they need to be able to have 10 calves without us ever interfering with them. Yeah. Like touching the feet, touching the and suck on. And, and that looks like, she's, I think, third carbon. And yeah. looks like she'll do 10 calves. I would agree. Um, Aye, right, look at her. And the docility on them as well is just ridiculous. Um, she's got plenty, looks like she's got plenty of milk still, but it's just not. They're probably the highest milk. They're, her size is like a really high milk size. Yeah. Um, and what's she, Timania Garth? Timania Garth daughter, yeah. I could bring up the graph of him on, you know, yeah. Yeah. And weans like 50% of her body weight yeah. every time four calves. But her feet are just going really cool. How so, old is she now? So she'll be fifth calf, six, six years old. That's a middle-aged middle yeah. cow. Feet never been touched, but they're just, the front ones are just like cracked. And yeah. getting too big. So last year she had a calf by um, a bull has got basically like perfect feet. Yeah. Um, and so it's just a way of culling them is expensive, but just trying to. Yeah. And the feet aren't like, probably might not have to touch them ever before yeah. she gets 10 calves, but we might, um, or we might have to cull it before that. Um, and so it's just that's one of the bonuses for AI for us. Ah, uh, that balance. That balance. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about it before, weren't we? Yeah. Just for a reference yeah. as well, so you've got what, how many cows do we say? About 300 or so. Yeah. And how many would you or Danny have to intervene with a year-ish? So this year, this year no cows, um, but generally I would say 1%, and that's it's about three. Inter yeah. Intervention includes any, uh, obviously assistance anyway, suckling on, yeah. um, having to do something, anything apart from tagging and birth weights yeah. is yeah. Assistance. assistance. So I'd say I'd say 1% is, is hard to for us to get by this year, for some reason we have. Um, but heifers, this year we were, <laughs> Three um, percent. We've been bullying all the heifers, so there's a few. Yeah. Like, they have a set of twin sisters. They both had assistance, and a couple of other ones. Yeah. But again, yeah, two um, under two percent is where we want to aim for. And it's amazing what you see again going as a vet, like between different farms, the, the difference in what people understand as normal. Yeah, yeah. Or desirable. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We don't really. It's just Danny on tagging them, yep. so he can't really, let's spend a day sucking on a calf, no. or sorting out heifer. Doesn't make sense. He can't, uh, like the tagging all slips behind, and he can run after a day on calves, which you can't catch, because they're already up. Well, that's it. It's relatively unusual for vets to do the actual AI in the UK. More often it's done by either the farmers themselves, especially if they're dairy farmers, or traveling technicians. There are a few reasons why we do it. One, because with the lack of dairy herds in the area, the provision of AI techs is often rather stretched. Two, 
because we think it's a really underutilized tool in suckler herds in this country. More on that in a previous technical, a link to that is in the video description. And three, because often vets find themselves synchronizing these beef cows for the AI, that is manipulating the estrus cycle without actually doing the service themselves, which can occasionally mean the whole thing gets rather disjointed. When everything's in house, one person, one organization has the ownership of it. Given that our farmers are block carvers, they are unlikely to get the year round practice they need to get good at AI quickly. So doing it themselves rarely makes sense. So when the practice was set up, Jack and Jenny did an AI course with embryonics. Again, they are linked in the video description before buying a flask and setting away. If you're a farmer and you want to learn more about AI in the suckler head, go and watch that technical go and talk to your vet. If you're a vet who wants to set up your own AI service, get in touch and we'd be very glad to help. As you can see from Jack, the systems and the consistency are key. So I should have said, because these are beef cattle, um, let's get out of the way of this cow. Because these are beef cattle, these don't like being handled, as George said, in general, try to minimize the stress in them that way. And this is a perfect example. All of these cows are on heat at once, and that means they're in estrus, they're receptive, they're part that, that part of the cycle where they're fertile, and so Jack's AI should hopefully work on a good number of them. That's perfect there. The way you achieve that is very simple. We manipulate their cycle using hormones. Now these are all normal hormones found in these cows at different types of their cycle. Um, the major one is progesterone and that you'll be familiar with. The contraceptive pill for human ladies is most often progesterone. In very simple terms, we pop a progesterone releasing device into the vagina of all these cows, stays there for about seven days, it's removed. And then a couple of days later, they come bullying. Now that timing's slightly different depending on what exact protocol you're using. There are variations on that theme and it tends to be different for heifers versus cows. And also I learned recently, it can be different if you're using sexed semen versus conventional semen. Sex semen is where it's been selected for either steers or heifer calves. It's quite a fascinating process in itself, but we'll park that for now. All of those cows jumping on each other is a good sign because that means they're bullying they're in the right frame of mind, you might say, but critically their body is ready to receive the semen. And so there's a good chance they're going to get in calf. The other way, of course, is natural observation. So that involves a lot more trips, a lot more cost, a lot more stress handling individual animals. Um, works fantastically on dairy farms where cows are going through the parlor twice a day, all, the, all day. Cows are perhaps more accustomed and acclimatized to frequent handling, but for beef cows, we use this three handling process. Sometimes it can be four or five handlings um, for different protocols. But again, the key thing is you line them up with the hormones so they're all receptive, serve them all and leave them be. That's the key thing. Just as little stress on them as possible and um, fingers crossed some good results. These straws that Jack's pulling out of the travel flask, um, he's being very careful. He's being very careful to get the right straw for the right cow. Uh, and you can see that, well, you won't, you won't be able to see, but you have to take it from me, that this writing on the, on the straw has the name of the bull. So that says Ford or Phileas Fogg. He's got his tag number and some more numbers, which presumably means something quite important. Right, these guys have got about 20 to do. So I'm gonna leave them to it. Uh, I'll have to find out the results at some point, but 
When will you scan these? Um, um, five weeks after the ball comes out, so it'll be six weeks plus five. Yeah. Um, 11 weeks time. 11 weeks time. Um, four, three. Um, but found out last year the scan's not. Uh, there's there's, yeah, there's some discrepancy. There's a discrepancy over here. Yeah, yeah. So we'll get some, we'll get and, some results, uh, yeah. Uh, Joe underscored. Jack. Anyway. Oh, well that's, so, that's an undersell. Over, the when the cars undersell come out. over deliver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Um, but anyway, I'm going to leave these guys to it. I'm not going to get in the way anymore. Uh, and yeah, we'll have to get an update at some point. I'll be in New Zealand, but we'll find out when you find out yeah. how we've done. But it's something like last year. Should be about 60 ish yeah. percent. All right, catch you in a bit, guys. All right, bye. Right. Again, hopefully you enjoyed that. I just enjoy making use of myself and uh, getting in the way generally. But if you did as well, don't forget to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it, hit like, and leave me a comment. Until next time.